Good morning. We are going to tackle one of the most difficult subjects I could share with you. And it's difficult not because of the teaching of Scripture, because of the generation in which we live. We're living in a generation when the divorce rate is so high and increasing. And yet at the same time, we've got to face the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ does teach about divorce. The Bible does teach about divorce. And there are certain principles here we've got to receive. Also, I'm sure that there are some of you listening to me who've been through divorce and you've remarried. And what I want to say before I say anything else don't go away with any condemnation, listen very carefully, and then take your situation back to the Holy Spirit and listen to Him. There is a speaker who goes to retreats called Iverna Tompkins. If ever you have the opportunity to listen to her, do so. She's one of the most outstanding lady speakers you'll ever hear. She is an ordained minister who went through a divorce, and she says something that's quite significant. She said, and this is for her, and it may not be true for you, she said, divorce is always sin. And she said it was not until she came to the point of confessing her divorce as a sin that she found her total freedom in Jesus. And from then on, she could live as he wanted her to. Now, think about that. Now, let's hear what Jesus said in chapter 10 and verse 1. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and came across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him, and as his custom was, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking him, now notice that it wasn't a genuine question, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What does Moses command you, he replied. They said, Moses permitted a man with a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote this for you in the law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they're no longer two but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. Well, now, what did Jesus mean? What is he saying to us here? apparently a number of things. First of all, I want you to see it was a loaded question. It wasn't a genuine question. It wasn't a question they particularly wanted answered. They simply wanted to trap Jesus. And they still hadn't learned that you couldn't trap Jesus. He was the master of every situation, just as he was the master of every question that was asked. So he simply puts a question back to them. What did Moses command you? And of course they knew straight away. Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. Fine. Now notice the way Jesus replies to that. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law. Then Jesus goes beyond Moses. You see, this is a fantastic fact about his teaching. He didn't deny what Moses had said. He simply went beyond that and went to the real root. He went back to creation, and he went back to God our Father, and notice what he says. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. There is equality, friend. And if you come from a church where your men and women are divided, and the men are allowed to do things and the women are not, I want you to ponder this statement. It seems to me that what Jesus stresses is total equality of sexes. And I don't think you can interpret his words in any other way and be fair to Scripture. In the beginning, God made them male and female. He made us equal. And over the years and generations, we have made us unequal, whichever way you tackle it. And it's still in our generation. A man can get service that a woman can't. 
You can get on a phone and get results that a woman can't just because you're a man. That is the problem we face. It is not what God designed. But it's true in marriage too. Very often a man wants to have his way and do what he wants, but his wife is not allowed to. If he wants to be unfaithful and have an affair on the side, that's permitted in his mind, but she's got to be faithful to him. Well, of course, that gets ridiculous either way. But Jesus is saying, God made an equality in the sexes. Then he goes on and says something else. Verse 7, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. I always stress this with couples, and I've stressed it before on this program. Jesus says, you leave your father and mother to be married. So do that. And don't be attached to them when you leave. It's a destruction for marriage. It's exactly against the command of our Lord. We should move right out and leave. Now that doesn't mean you don't honor your father and mother, but you are in a different relationship to them. But mum and dad, you hear this too. Because conversely, when your children marry, you leave them. And you leave them alone. And you stop interfering. They're not your boy and girl anymore. They belong to someone else. In fact, Jesus says it. And this, I think, is where some parents are in awful danger with the Heavenly Father. So therefore, they're no longer two but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. And I hate to tell you this, but I see situations in marriage, and I guess you do too, that they're not working today because mum or dad on one side or the other is still separating them. Now, friend, if you're doing that, if you're causing any separation between your daughter and her husband, or your son and his wife, let me tell you here and now, you're working against the command of God, and you're in grave danger. I think God is going to deal with you, and I think some parents are going to have an awful time when they face God because of what they've done in the marriage of their children. Take your hands off. It's none of your business. Get out of the way. Be supportive. Be open to answer questions. But don't you dare interfere. Leave your son or daughter as they have left you. Otherwise, you've moved away from what God has told you through the lips of his son, Jesus Christ. They're no longer two but one flesh. There is the physical action here, but there's much more spiritually. In every way, they are united and they become one in the sight of God. Now, because they become one in the sight of God, they never become two again unless one of them dies. And then one goes on to be with him and one is left. And the one left is free to marry. So Jesus adds a little piece here. Because the disciples asked him. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. If she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. Now, I think you can add a little thought here. If someone gets into premarital sex, and many, many people do today, you know that and I know that. The first time you get into the sexual act, you're joining yourself to that person and becoming one. Now, therefore, if you go on having premarital sex with other people, then you're in the form of committing adultery. Now, this gets very complicated in our generation. Now, you say, just a minute, Richard, you've got in a real spot here. What are you going to do about all the people who have divorced and remarried? Well, that's exactly the problem, isn't it? So, when we were preparing a leaflet on Christian marriage, I sat down with our elders and said, Now look, we have to have a statement of belief about marriage and divorce. And we've got to have one we agree on. Because it doesn't matter what we say, we're going to have some pot shots at us. So this is what we produced. Divorce is not the perfect will of God. As a ministry, we believe that for a couple who are Christian believers, divorce cannot be considered. 
we also believe that divorce can be forgiven and forgotten by God as much as any other sin. We stand on the word of God for couples who marry that a Christian believer must marry another Christian believer. Now, if you stop and analyze this for a number of things we're saying, divorce is not God's will. But you must remember, there are times when someone's going through a living hell. And I don't think there's any way you can honestly say that the loving God we see in and through Jesus Christ wants that person to continue in that hell. If you believe that, I don't. And I don't see God's heart like that. But you see, as a ministry, we say for a couple who marry in Christ, there's no divorce. But the fact is, I've never found a couple who've married in Christ who are seeking a divorce. I've met a couple who now live in Christ, who've got into problems. I see a couple now where one is a Christian and the other is not, who've got into problems. But personally, I have not found a couple who married in Christ who are seeking to divorce. I'm sure there are some, but I personally haven't met them. And therefore, when couples marry in Christ, we have to stress this. You're becoming one, and it is for life and only death will separate the two of you. Well, you say, now what happens? I've been divorced and I've remarried. What do I do now? Well, I think you come back to Ivana Tompkins. You confess the fact that your divorce was a sin in the sight of God, and you put that right with Him, and then you get on with the marriage you're already in. I don't think for a moment the Lord wants you to separate and all that sort of nonsense. That wouldn't make sense. And I'm sure you've seen as I've seen that some second marriages are very much blessed by the Lord our God. And I think we can say the first one was an absolute mistake. And remember, and this is sometimes where the church of God has come out with statements that I don't think can possibly be of his mind. We can have these sins forgiven. Because they're sins of divorce, or because they're sins of sex, they can still be forgiven as much as anything else. You see, what we tend to do in the church is make sins like this one sort that can't ever be forgiven. That's not what the Bible says. Confess, you're forgiven, it's forgotten, you have a new start. But if you're in Christ, don't even contemplate it. You're tied to the one you married. 